Hey guys, what's up? Thanks so much for listening. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Please like, subscribe, share with your mates, and enjoy the episode. All right, we're back. Another episode of The Flip Side. Last time I've talked to you, Christian, was last Saturday. So it's been three days. Much tighter schedule than usual, and it's going to be tight next week as well because we're going to move it to Mondays. Um, so that's we're going to. I'll see you in six days instead of seven. Um, but yeah, how, how you been? How's the weekend? How's the start of the week for you? The weekend's been good. Couldn't do much at all. Um, literally couldn't do anything. So today is the sixth of July, officially into the new year, end of financial year. Is finished. We oh, started the new financial year, I should say. But yeah, my weekend was just chill. Sure, didn't do much. Just went outside as much as I could in lockdown. Lockdown in Sydney is going to get extended. Oh, I'll put money on it being extended. But yeah, it is what it is. Didn't didn't get up to much. Didn't do much. But what about yourself? Did you did you get up to anything? Obviously, can't do much anyway. So yeah, couldn't do much on my end. Saturday was. Um, did did our call? Did our podcast? I can't remember what I did on Saturday. Um, I think I did some chores or something. Sunday was oh, I talked to a bunch of friends. I think I was like, just um, Saturday was just like a chill day. Um, I think I told you how when we talked on Saturday, I was like, I went through a slump. Well, not a slump, but I just grinded and I was just like out for the week. Yeah. So I was talking to a few friends about that, and then I came up with this like checklist. You know how like pilots um, they have like a checklist like even though they fly freaking every day they know what the buttons to push yet they still follow a checklist so I was like huh like even though I have like a a plan out the day it's not really like a checklist like a plan there's like there's a plan where you put in what you do 9 a.m. 10 a.m. and there's like a checklist for the day and a checklist is it's a completely different thing and this checklist has put me on fire. The last three days I've been on point and I'm curious to see how far this checklist can take me. I feel really good, really productive. Usually when I feel this good, I get a bit scared because every single time I feel really good and productive, I go through a slump because every up comes a down. But hopefully this checklist is the, the final thing that's really gonna help me just be consistent day in, day out. And it's, and it's killed it. I worked on Sunday, worked on Monday, worked on Tuesday, and we'll see how it goes. So what's the difference between this and, say, a daily planner that you used to have? What's the big key difference that you're noticing as well as what you're trying to achieve with this checklist as opposed to daily plan? So the daily plan doesn't have little checklists such as, all right, put your phone away before the morning routine. or. Um, after you work out what are the plants so that's one less thing you have to think about or eat lunch and in brackets no TV or social media or phone and then after that it's like clean do, do like a small cleaning chore after you eat and then you can go back to work so it has all these little things such as um, wash dishes at 7.30 I guess that's a normal thing so, so it's like a whole day's checklist. It's not like a exactly. morning checklist. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's like a whole day checklist from A to Z. And I think, one, it really takes a bit of mental power of thinking on what to do next. Like, literally, it's like freaking wake up at 8 a.m., meditate for five minutes, exercise part one, go to the toilet, exercise part two, make oats, clear dishes and water plants, eat oats, boil water, brush teeth, fill up the thermos, fill up the kettle, cold chow. So it's like every little thing, and it's when it, it, you charge and you build up momentum, you don't have to think about that next little thing. Usually I'd have to like do all this, like what I just read out would be part of the morning routine. And I can't believe I somehow used to remember and just do all these things. But now I don't have to even think. So even in my worst day, I can sort of make sure I check everything and don't be like, did I miss something? Um, yeah. So like it's very, it sounds very detailed. Like it sounds like incredibly detailed in terms of wake up. So like what made you want to do it? Because like it's some of these things you can 
you can argue that they're like self, like automated. You can just put yourself on autopilot and you can get it done. So like, what's what would be what's the benefit? What's the benefit essentially? The main benefit is when it's there, it has to be done. So these little things that you do on autopilot, you don't put it into your calendar. You don't put it on your to-do list. And as a result, it sometimes just slips out. But when you write it down, now you have to do it. And when you have to do it in this certain order, things just click, click, click. Now I'm only three days in. So who knows, maybe next Monday I jump on a call and it's like, yep, it worth for a while, but it's not sustainable. Hopefully I don't say that, uh, but yeah, maybe we'll wait until a week before I sort of give give a bit more credit to it. Um, but yeah, yeah, like it is only the early days anyway, and like I think maybe a week or two weeks, and you'll be able to really grasp the benefit of it. Slash, if there's no benefit of it at all, so it's like, yeah, it can be a hit or it can be a miss. But at the end of the day, if it works for you, it works. You know, like it's one of those things. For me personally, I could never deal with it. I could, I could never do it. Like, but I get what you're trying to do in terms of just like really trying to knuckle down and like get everything in order. That's so like you can. It's it's like a it's a discipline thing. At the end of the day, it's to keep yourself disciplined, right? Yeah. Because like as a consultant, I know the solutions to all my problem, but it's really hard when there's freaking. 20 problems you can't remember 20 solutions like for example the solution to not going on your phone is by putting your phone in the room next door before you start work the solution of not watching tv at lunch is by unplugging the tv before you eat um there's like what's another problem the problem to not snoozing um not staying up late is just not hitting the snooze button when the alarm is ringing um and then what if you do hit the stop button and you keep watching tv i guess the solution to that to that is put a freaking powerpoint thingy where the tv turns off at 9 p.m so there's solutions to all these problems but there's freaking 10 traps throughout the day and all you have to do is fall into one of the trap whether it's okay jump on your phone after lunch or all right let's start the first episode of this new season or you start the day checking your phone after waking up from bed there's literally 10 traps and like to have a successful day you have to avoid all 10 traps i was like that's impossible let's just create a checklist to make sure i don't fall into those 10 traps and i don't have to even think about it yeah all right all right at the end of the day you know you only have yourself to to hold accountable for it anyway so might as well just give it a go might as well give it a go and, and see and see how it goes what else anything else been new anything else you've been doing or i saw your recent post you 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 went diving that was the like the the saturday just before lockdown got announced i think is that correct or yeah i think yeah, it was i actually got a call was like hey due to COVID, um blah 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 have you been to bondi um are you okay um so i think maybe it was during lockdown i can't remember um, but yeah, it was like only five people were there, so it was really intimate. But yeah, it was a solid dive. Um, this afternoon, I went for a walk before um, the meeting I had previous to this. The parks are packed. It feels like mid lockdown again. The people are just like out walking about just because of lockdown, so I had that vibe again. And while I was walking, I just remember this previous incident this is like a while ago like I was walking the park I was on the phone I was talking to my um, friend from overseas and I, and I see this guy I sort of know him he knows me um, and, and he knows he follows me on Instagram he knows I sort of do drop shipping and then I'm in the e-com world and he's been wanting to get into that space and stuff um, he, he's a bit of a, like a weirder fellow but he's, he's, a, he's a nice dude so I'll say hey how you been I'm just gonna want to call at the moment and I was like, oh, how you been? And he's like, yeah, you know, I've been good. Um, yeah, like the other day I got mugged. Um, you know, I was just walking around like, off the station and someone mugged me and they just took my phone and wallet. Um, but yeah, other than that, I've been good. And I'm here, I'm on the phone call. And I'm like, what? what? Um, I, I'm sorry to hear that. It was like, what no, it, it, it's okay. Like, you know, it sucks. Like, I'm a bit traumatized from it. But, you know, it's not... And I'm like, what? 
You know what it was? This is a trap. It's a trap. He's trying to get you to give him some free free lessons and stuff. Free strategy sessions. That's exactly what it is. It's a trap. Did you say anything else after? Um, it, like the next thing he was like, yeah, like, you know, I've been trying to like, just, you know, meditate, just get past it. You know, I'm a bit traumatized. Um, but yeah, it, it's okay, man. Well, what about you? How are you going? <laughs> and I'm like, what the f where do you go from there? It was just like one of those weirdest conversations ever. It was just like right off the gate. I've got a knot. Um, <laughs> yeah. You can't say anything. You just have, to, oh, I'm so sorry, man. I'm so sorry to hear. So, uh, listen, I've got a call though. I'll talk to you later, right? Like that's exactly what I would do. Like, like, <laughs> there is absolutely no point. That's shocking. That's honestly shocking. I can't believe it. God damn it. But you're right. Everyone is out in the parks. Everyone's out and about all of a sudden. Like, not going to lie. Same. <laughs> Contributing to it a little bit. But at the same time, suddenly everyone wants to start exercising when it's peak lockdown. You know, what can you do? What can you do? You can't do anything. But it is what it is. At least you didn't give that guy any free strategy sessions, did you? Like, how did you end it? How did you end it? Like, you would have just... I was like, uh... Send me a message, you know, keep me updated, let me know if, if there's anything I can do to help. I'm just on a call right now. I was like, yeah, that's, 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 that, that's, that's fine. Yeah, that's, that's okay. <laughs> it just made me feel guilt trip me. And guess what? As I was looping back home, I saw him again. I, and then we just, like, I was just like, I just did the hey man and I didn't say anything. Yeah, yeah. Like I just didn't want to open it because so I was like, hey man, and I just kept walking like Chew. Yeah, because if you open your mouth, that's danger. That is danger. Like it's smart to just keep your mouth shut. But then ironically, Christian, I think maybe I sometimes do that. Like sometimes you hit me up be like, yeah, how you been? I'm like, yeah, but things been pretty good. Slow week, bit of a slump, but trying like sometimes I sort of do that where I sort of start the conversation with negative things where it makes it hard for you to reply but at the same time obviously I do it differently the way he did it was just really weird but do I ironically do it? Nah it depends it, like we talked about it last I know week, we did so yeah last week's conversation but it depends on the context of the situation the friendship etc you don't do you know the guy? Be honest. Do you like know him? <laughs> no, no, no. The fact that you just don't. Yeah, you don't know him. That's so different. <laughs> if someone said that to me and I just barely met them, like I'm thinking of like people I've met at uni, just like random people that I probably don't even remember. Like there was this one guy that I saw the other day and he goes, oh, like I, I was like, I've seen him somewhere before and I don't know where and I don't know his name at all. And like, because it was at training. And then he goes, like, he goes, oh, hey man, how you been? I'm like, yeah, man, good, good. Um, I'm Christian, by the way. He goes, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, I know, I know. I haven't seen you since uni. I'm like, oh. And I'm like, I'm trying so hard with my brain to remember. And I'm like, I don't remember this guy at all. I'm like, did we do a group assignment together or something? And I'm like running through my head through all the group assignments that I've done. He goes, no, 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 no. I think i just seen you around at uni. <laughs> oh. did, you, like, did we do the same? Did we do anything together? He goes, no, 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 no. I've seen you walk around. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, do I have you? I'm like, have I? And, I, and I'm like, I didn't want to ask if I have him as a friend on Facebook because, you know, that's rude, that's weird. So I went home and I said, I'm not a friend on Facebook. I have like five, ten, ten mutuals with him. And then he goes, I'm like, did we do the same course? Like, how did you see me at uni? Where did you? He goes, oh, I think so. What did you study? I told him about a study. He goes, "Oh yeah, I, I did that, but then I dropped it halfway. I finished uni in 2019. So he finished uni in 2019. I finished uni in 2021, 2017, 18, 19. It gives me two and a, two and a bit years of seeing. Him. Bro, when have I seen this guy? I haven't seen this guy ever. So I'm in my head. I'm just like, oh okay. So go looping back. It's the equivalent of someone like that coming up to me and be like, yeah man. Oh well, actually, I don't know the guy's name, so maybe it's a little bit different." But if someone like that said something to me, like, oh, yeah, man, I got mugged, and she'd be like, look, man, I'm really sorry. That's just a shit go. That's, just, that's honestly just a shit go. Like, I can't, do, what do you want me to say? That's just a shit go. I'm so sorry. Like, yeah. Yeah. That just sounds shit. I don't know. I, like, I'm sorry. Like, that's it. But but if it was a friend of mine, I'd be like, yeah. Today, when I was like walking in the park, 
I was like listening to music. You know that awkward where it's just like a not narrow path, but it's, it's like a decent parkway. And you walk it, and then it's like a long straight path. It's like the, the longest path. And there's a girl. She's we're, we're walking directly, and like we at distance, I can't really see who this person is. So I was wow, she's pretty cute. Oh wait, she looks pretty young. Oh, I'm giving too much eye contact, let's look away. <laughs> and then you see she, she's looking at me, and I'm like, is she thinking the same way? And then we just like... <laughs> you just like, that's why she... And like, that happens all the time, does it not? We're just like, long distance straight, and there's no one else to look at. Because it's just us two on this long footpath. Yeah, it's like you have to make awkward eye contact and like the minute that you do, it's like, oh, you, you've, it's been established that you both have already made the eye contact. So you're just like, oh, what do you do now? Do you maintain it? Do you look away? Do you maintain it? Do you purposely look down? Do you just immediately look away and just pretend like it never happened? Or do you de-approach? <laughs> now, me being me. I'd immediately look away and pretend like it never happened. It's happened a lot. Or you can be nice, just maintain it and smile and keep going and like look away. But there's no coming back from it. You know there's no coming back from it. It's been done. The scene's been made. What did you do? Dude, I heard like this comedian. He said, dude, whenever I'm in that situation, I just keep staring. I just keep looking. I know it's uncomfortable. I just like keep doing it because like I'm not a bitch. I was like, oh, interesting. Interesting concept. I was like, maybe, maybe I should like, maybe I should practice the look, nod and smile. But that's weird because now they think I'm like trying to f them or something. So what I do is I, I usually I just look up. <laughs> I just look up. I can, I look straight. I just look straight. So obviously they're a bit to the right. So I just look straight past them. <laughs> that's what I usually do that's at smart. least. Yeah. That's smart. So the thing is, when I'm out, if I'm on a run, if I'm running. I'll just, I'll just look, pretend to look focused. I won't even look at anyone. If they're that far away, then I know that I can steal a quick glance at them to like, just obviously, you, ha you glance at people. It's not, <laughs> I steal a quick glance and I look down. Not not any malicious intent or whatever. I just like, if I'm jogging, I see they're a good distance away. I can steal a glance. All right, that's who's coming. Put my head down and just keep going. That way, they never disturb me. They don't even look at me or pretend to smile. Because I just don't look like I want to have that conversation. So if I'm walking though, I don't know. Walking is just weird. I don't know what you yeah. walk when you walk. I don't know what. Like I have to have my phone in my hand. Otherwise, it's just <laughs> awesome. it's quiet. You know what I mean? But then I put my phone away and I just look down. I just look down on the ground and just keep walking. Because <laughs> I don't want to try and. Once I made eye contact with someone I like worked with for a brief amount of time. Oh, it was so awkward. Like they stopped to have a conversation. I was like, hi, and I kept walking. <laughs> and it was just like, oh, God damn. But that makes sense. A comedian's a comedian. They're the ones that they do all the weird shit. They're yeah. fine with it. They go and do like stand ups and shit. They're fine with it. I'm not. Right? I'm <laughs> yeah. not a comedian for that reason. Dude, so I was thinking of this concept. I don't know, but I've seen like when I'm walking, if there's like some weird, weird girl and she looks at me. Mm -hmm. Usually, like, I don't know, I don't, I don't get nervous, or I'm like, okay, whatever, like, that's weird. She probably, like, likes me or something, or thinks I'm hot. But if, the, if there's a hot girl, and she looks at you, all of a sudden you're like, whoa, like, you feel happy, you're cheery, like, shit, like, does she like me or something? Like, it's weird how, like, it was so, it's so superficial. It's like judging a book by its cover, or something. And this is just a glance, it doesn't even mean anything as well. <laughs> And I just forgot, it's, it's just a glance. Like, it doesn't mean, but all of a sudden your mind's like, that person just looked at me. And, am I, like, handsome? My, your mind's like, it's love at first sight, bro. It's love at first sight, and then that's where it all begins. That's when you just go for it, bro. Oh, dude, so the other day, I was at a rock climbing gym. And I was like, well, me and my friend Reese we'll, we'll climbing. And all of a sudden, upstairs, it's like upstairs to the ballroom section. This girl from the distance, she's climbing. She's like doing all these crazy things. And she has like, I don't know, she's like thick, she's juicy. Like she got like good, I'm not gonna speak any further, but she's really like, she got a good body and she's climbing and she's upside down and shit. I was like, whoa, okay. And she gets closer, she's working down towards the wall. And she's like working on this problem next to us. And then, you know, she's, 
she comes, she finishes something. I'm like, oh, um, that's, that's pretty hard. You got pretty close there. So I start talking to her. And she, we're talking about climbing. She's sharing how she's, you know, we're talking about the competition. And Reese, he finishes his climb and he comes down, he's sitting next to me. And he's like nodding his head, listening along. I'm like, Reese, Reese is coming in. And then, you know, we're, we're talking about competitions and we're on to the next, before I get, like, I was about to jump topics and talk about something else. Reese asked another question about climbing. We're like, all right, Reese, Reese swooped in. So I'll give it to you, Reese. I'm gonna look at this old man and ask him for some tips. I'm, I'm giving it to you, <laughs> Reese. Like, you don't have the confidence to say hi, but whatever. I'm giving you her. I'm gonna play the bigger man. Yeah, you played the through ball, and he came in and finished the dinner, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, like that's what happens every time. Like since like Reese is like is a bit. He hasn't like approached to just talk to random strangers before, and I so do that all the time. But Reese is the one that swoops in, and he he's like this blonde dude, tall, freaking. He's like this man's man. He looks like freaking Chris Evans. Um, so he just swoops in and just takes every meal I try to get for myself. But whatever. <laughs> so I'm like. Um, they're having, they're talking and they're getting deep eye contact. He's nodding. They're talking. And I'm just talking to this old man. He's giving me tips on climbing. And then I go down and I'm like, Hey, um, do you have like Instagram or something? Let me get your socials. Cause I knew Reese like was just going to let it go. So I was like, well, let me at least get socials. So like, I'll give it to you Reese because you know, I got you. So I asked him for socials, went down, got my phone, got up. And Reese is nudging me for some reason. I don't know why, but got her IG. She put her IG on my phone, followed her. And then as we're walking downstairs, leaving, Reese is like, yo, she's 15 years old. And I'm like, no. And at the same time, I was like, I just got her Instagram details. I was like, oh my god, what the hell? <laughs> and then I'm like, what? Are you sure? Are you joking? And then he was like, nah. Like, and then he was telling me how she lives on an island. She lives in a freaking island um, in Karinga National Park in North Sydney, that, that Karinga National Chase Park. There's like islands and stuff. She lives on a island. She takes a ferry to school and work. Um, she works in a marina. There's places that have yachts. She works there. So Reese is just telling me about what he's been talking to her about. And then I go on her Instagram and I see her like, like I, I remember I saw something was like, in her caption was like 2020 or something. And then I was like, oh, she's 20 years old maybe. He was like, no, that's 2020 for like the new year. I was like, oh, she's actually 15. <laughs> so like my hopes are up for a bit. And then I go home, Reese is like, yo, what's her IG? I send Reese's her IG. She, Reese follows her. Guess what happens? She follows Reese back immediately and she doesn't follow me back. You didn't follow you back? Nah, nah. That's good, it's a win. I know it's a win because luckily she's, yeah, 18, yeah. so it's good. I'm good. But like, Where Reese is 18. Yeah, I'm at 15. Oh. <laughs> so that happened. So close call. Okay. The, the, the police aren't at your door anymore. It's okay. It is a okay. Yeah, I'm Definitely safe. Definitely unfollow that, bro. Yeah, that's 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 a yikes. That is a yike. From now on, bro. It seems shallow enough, but like, I don't know. It's hard to gauge the age of people when you're talking to them for the first time, especially if they're strangers. Eh? <laughs> yeah, but. Do girls are starting yeah. to get, they, they all girls look really like older than they look nowadays. And I think it's like due to TikTok or something. We're like 12 year old girls, like they're twerking and they look 18. Yeah, that is true. Like it, it's, all, it's all a trap, bro. It's all a trap. You, you, you can't get into it. The minute that you think about you, that you are, it, it's an absolute trap. Don't, oh my God, I'm still processing this. This is a lot. <laughs> this is a lot. And dude, uh, me and Reese, as we're walking to the car, we're like calculating, we're like counting the age difference. We're like, oh, in three years' time, she'll be legal. Like, we're just like calculating all the difference. She's like, she's, dude, I'm like 22. That's seven year age gap. What the hell? That's like, 
that's like a freaking kid. Like the freaking kid that lives next door, he's seven years old. Like Jesus. And then he's running around freaking causing a muck. And that's the age difference between us, me and her at least. Reese is 20, so it's a five year age gap. But yeah. Oh my God, that's just some, yeah, it is. This is why TikTok is 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 dangerous, bro. TikTok is dangerous because of that reason. You can't tell the ages. You just gotta ask for ID next time you start talking to someone. Just be like, "Can I check ID, please?" Pretend you're a bouncer. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, like now I was like, "Oh, maybe that's why Reese was nudging me when I was like, yeah, let me get my phone to get your ID details." But I think it was nudging me for like another reason. Like apparently she. Oh, because she lives on an island. That's why he wanted to tell me. <laughs> not, not that, not that she's under Asian. That was slightly predatory. Yeah, not for that reason at all. Oh my god! I hope that never happens to you again. Just don't <laughs> jump into anything like that again. Don't jump to conclude. Don't. Oh, yikes! 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 I have nothing to say. We're moving on. We're moving on right now. <laughs> so I've been watching the Euros. Obviously, the Euros have been going on for the past two three weeks um absolutely amazing if you are a football fan because there have been some amazing games so the euros just do you know what the euros are just quickly explain yeah quickly explain it for me yeah so it's just essentially a a uefa run competition um where all the european countries in the world compete um in a soccer in a football tournament so to you have to qualify for the tournament first so only the best teams in europe can play not all the teams and it's just a classic there's different group stages you make it through the group stages quarterfinals sorry group stages round of 16s quarters semis finals blah 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 right so it's only during these euros where there was something that was um released not released but it was shown on like instagram Wow, I hadn't noticed it before. I didn't know it before. So I'll send you a link. Oh, no, I'll share my screen with you really quickly. All right. So the years are going on. So you've had like Germany versus Portugal and like all the best teams in the world. So it's been going for the past three weeks. Pinnacle of football. Love it. Now, whether people can like it or not or disagree or not, but it's fact. Football is the biggest sport in the world, 100% biggest sport in the world, gets the largest audiences in the world. The World Cup final is the most watched um, sporting event in world in the world, right? So naturally, the Euros will gain, gain the same traction. And what does that mean? It means advertising opportunities, plenty and plenty and plenty of advertising opportunities. Yeah. So, um, you know, on the side, the like the billboards on the side of the football pitch, there's like there's like virtual boards that run yes. through like companies yeah so like there's heaps of companies that put their logo on there and everything right so like tiktok tiktok have actually very aggressively been marketing in the euros like their, wow. their logo is in everywhere in the euros no way TikTok, all, all the best. see these banners on yes. the side they've been aggressively doing it wow but what i've just what i've just noticed <gasps> is that these banners whoa yeah, based on the the broadcaster of what? which you're watching the match from, they can have it what? put on to whatever um, brand they'd like. What so you can you see here, this is the one in stadium, and you can tell because the um, the refresh rate of the screen that you're watching is, I think, faster or slower. I'm not too sure than the speed of the transition of the actual billboard compared to what you see here in the virtual feed, wow. which is like a broadcaster. And the bro- and a separate broadcaster, so like it's crazy, and I didn't even know it. So it's like using modified feeds to provide targeted ads to, you know, people watching in different contents of the world, and I was like, what? I didn't know that. So apparently, there's like a there's like this technology where it relays on the board to your screen in real uh, to the broadcasting screen in real time. They can relay a message there, and it looks like it's there, but it's not actually there. The one that's actually there, as you can see, the one that's been changing in the refresh rate. And I'm thinking the whole time my life's been alive. Like, like what the hell? I didn't know that advertising changes based on the broadcasters. And then I'm thinking, it's not worth it. If you're a massive organization, you know, sponsoring this um, tournament only for your sponsorship not to be shown to millions of people because it depends on the broadcaster at the end of the day anyway. But then it's like, oh, the 
these these companies that want to sponsor it, they should be paying the broadcasting organization so they can show it. So it's like that blew my mind. I didn't know that was a thing because it changes based on thing, but it just goes to show we are fed what we what they want us to see. <laughs> it's the, it's a matrix. It's. A- Dude, I was watching. Yeah, that was pretty interesting. Have you watched that Netflix documentary, Social Dilemma? No, I really want to. You sure? Hey, good things. You will love it. I think uh, I watched a bit of it, and it's like, whoa! Even like I'm in the space, and I'm pretty still mind blown. Um, but yeah, like there's like these billboards where like the cars drive past the electronic ones. Apparently, those like you can literally be like an everyday person like me, pay the company some money, and get your face in front of everyone. That's driving past. And like you get me an idea. Uh, I want to try and get a stunning.com billboard just for fun, just for like promo. Fill some marketing, Ooh. get in a cool location, a bit of marketing, a bit of advertisements, a bit of IG posts. Um, what's the next one? Not prestige, um, uh, credibility. Outreach. Credibility, outreach, yeah, all that. But the thing is, you know, when you mentioned billboards in Sydney, you know, the ones I think of, you know, across the great, um, sorry, the M4, how you're going in towards Homebush area, how you always see those billboards there near the racetrack and everything, the dirt tracks, sorry, you always see those billboards there. But then I always realize those billboards that are there, they're very like big billboards in the sense that like you will see the latest movies being advertised there. And if it's like... We'd, we'd have to find a different location for studying.com. Dude, imagine putting put my whole face there. I'm just like, this is me. The whole, the whole billboard is just me. Andy by study.com. It's just like, it's just like, it, that's crazy. Like the world has gone into a place where and nobody like me can do that. Literally that's back then. There were so many freaking gate, those um, doors, gates, um, guards to get a, a chance to just get your billboard up there but now you literally just go online it's a bidding system it's like all right let me get my ad up there from 9 a.m to 9 p.m um, next tuesday all right cost this much all right here venmo or like here i'll pay credit card yeah 100 percent. and like there's different formats you can have a digital billboard um you can have it on the side of the bus you can have it on the train <laughs> the train the bus shelter Bus shelters are the worst, bro. The ones that <laughs> People freaking draw on it. Yeah. You know in um, shopping malls, how they have the billboards in the center, like in the center of the mall, there's just this random ad yes. that they have that just, yeah, they have those. I, I completely forget. And like, I think to get it, you have to become a member. And then, and yeah, then you those can ones are hard. Sure. Those ones are hard. Yeah, the ones that are on bus uh-huh. stands, buses, the one how, you know how you see it, everything is like connected. Those ones are definitely hard. The random billboards off the side of a highway or like in front of like some um, skyscraper. I think those, if it's electronic, it just goes to the highest bidder. Yeah, okay, yeah. So I'm thinking like, yeah, that's, you're right. Like those ones that are connected have a destination A to B and go to different places is very hard because you're reaching so many more people as opposed to just a single billboard. But I reckon it, like, I'm just trying to look at it now. I'm on billboardsaustralia.com. And I'm thinking, like, how, how can you get it? Like, it says member. And then I think you'd have to sign up or something. Or, like, like how can one normal person just get it? Yeah, I'll probably have to do some more research into it. Because I know this guy, his, his name is Justin Escalona. He does it a lot in America. He just does it in every city. But, yeah, Billboards Australia, oh, that looks like a pretty official site man hopefully it's uh, yeah so you have to go on billboards australia you have to register log in then you can search for billboards available via postcode so you could do it by postcode you can you just have to get a professional setup done studying.com andy my it could be decent you know it's a different form of advertising instagram is one thing billboard australia literally looks like facebook advertising back end huh let's see how much it costs Smaller sites can cost anywhere between 2000 to 4000 a month. On the top end, if you're looking to do the Anzac Bridge, it can cost $250,000 for 28 days. Damn, that's crazy. But then that's $10,000 for one day to be on the Anzac Bridge. 
I'd pay 10,000 just for the Anzac Bridge for just one day and just do a bunch of promos, drive the G-Wagon, film for one whole day straight and just get like a year's worth of marketing promo. You should do billboards a book for a minimum of seven days. Oh. So you'd have to do 70K. All right, maybe not. You'd have to do 70K, <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean though, like it's one day and you're on Anzac Bridge. But the thing is, what I'm thinking is like Anzac Bridge, just a lot of people just driving on it. Main main people are driving. So they see it, they might not be able to search it up right away. Oh, but even then, even if we were to get a digital one, it would be anywhere where a car is going through anywhere, right? Oh. So You know that you know how every time you say you see those billboards that says unsee this or buy this space? That's a website, buythispace.com.au. Interesting. I'm looking at their website. Yeah, there's there's like a few on the Cumberland Highway that I've seen where there's like open for because no one's buying it. So like, but then like a bank comes and buys it. So like, I think it's definitely good opportunity. You never know, right? Dude, maybe during COVID, all these prices are like dirt cheap. Because I know Rush oh, is apparently TV advertisement everyone was pulling out of TV advertising and all of a sudden Rami from Russia comes in and was like, hey, I want to advertise. And one of the mark head of Channel 7 was like, why do you want to advertise? Everyone's pulling out and you're coming in looking to advertise. Um, and he was able to get spots for $30. Now, I don't know what that means. Like, what does a $30 spot mean? Like, $30 seems really cheap to be on TV, but uh, maybe it's like a bundle deal or something. I'd have to like find out more about that. I'll probably do like a whole video and then research about I was this. Gonna, I was about to say, it could become like a, a different type of YouTube video that you do, like putting my face yeah. on the Anzac Bridge or putting my face yeah. on like yeah. Yeah, the M4 and then go through the entire process and like going and getting it done. Because I remember, um, I think Logan Paul did a video like that, like putting his... He put his friend's face on a billboard or something. Yeah, it could be a sick video. But like, if you get your face on the Anzac Bridge, my God. <laughs> it's expensive. So, dude, you know how every TV show, a lot of the main characters, I don't know, it's like a thing where the main character ends up dating his therapist. It's like a common trope. I don't know what it is. And then I was like, huh. You know, it would be cool to have a friend that's like a psychologist or a therapist because you, you'll get to learn things and you get like basically three free therapy. And then I was talking to my friend, I was like, hey, like, you know, there's this person, you know, she's a therapist uh, or psychologist or that's her degree, but she always finds herself like everyone just reaches out to her with problems. Like if you talk to her, if you call her, she'll be like, oh, yeah, so uh, is everything okay or what's the problem or like that's the first response because she's just used to people reaching out to just men. I was like, fuck, that's like, it must suck to be like that type of person. <laughs> but then at the same time, I was like, yeah, I want to get close to that person because I want to get, a, I want to get like free therapy. I was like, oh, that's ironic. I'm doing the exact same thing. I know what you mean. It would be, it would actually suck. Like if you had... <laughs> If you, especially if you're good at it, like you know that person you were talking about last week, if they're good at their job, they probably have all their like close friends like calling her and everything, be like, "Hey, she's like, what's up?" That's so sad. That's actually sad. Dude, talking about that, yesterday I'm just like minding my own business, finished the day early. I get this call from this guy I've been talking to in ages. Uh, I called him back. I was like, "Hey, man, how are you?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm good. What's up?" I was like, yeah, I was just looking to get into drop shipping. I'm looking to like buy an online store, um, just seeing if you could help out. I was like, you know, I, I, I wouldn't recommend buying a store. Like if someone's selling a store, there's a reason why they're selling it. I was like, oh yeah, I know man, but I, I just don't have the time because you know, I'm busy. You know, I don't want to put in the time to do drop shipping. I'll just buy something because you know, I just don't have the time. Um, but yeah, like it, they show proof and they, they give reasons why they sell it. You know, they might be selling it because, you know, they want to retire. I'm like, I don't know, man. Like if you, if you do buy one, you got to be really careful. Yeah, man. And it just keeps going. And 20 minutes in, I'm like, we're going in, we're just going in circles. He wants to do consulting and I was like, like usually when people ask for help, I usually just give them free consulting, but like. I was just in this weird situation. I was like, 
dude like we're just chatting for 20 minutes and it's already tiring i definitely don't want to do consulting for you like if you want my help you're gonna to have to like join the program or something because like it was just this weird 20 minute conversation where we just go in circles i was like yeah like you know people wouldn't sell something if it's making money if it's that automated you're looking for an automated store then why don't they just keep it well why would you yeah. and then like w there's a good chance that when they sell to you you're not gonna you have to figure out how to advertise what if he was like, yeah, he was just giving me all these weird excuses. I'm like... So what was the point of him even calling in the first place then? There's no point at all. Yeah, I think... He's, and, oh, mine was pretty seven. Dude, in the end, I was like, yeah, if you want help, you know, let me connect you to my partner and we'll set you up. Oh, let me go ahead and reach out to these store owners first and just suss it out first and, and I'll get back to you. Or like, I just want to message them to see how they, you know, get their reply. I'm like, well, why'd you call me then? He was like one of those people. It's just like... I don't know how to describe it. It's like these people that just have too much time on their hands where they just they can just f around and just like go in circles. Time wasters, man. Absolute time, time wasters. wasters. What a waste of time. What the hell was the point of that? That's so stupid, especially like now that you mention it. Yeah, like a lot of people could just call you up and just like essentially just ask you for free help because they know that you're doing it. Like people that you know of will like just message you on NC, you know what I mean? But like, Jesus Christ, that's just so much. Like, that guy just sounds like an absolute idiot. He, at the end of it, he just goes, oh, yeah, I'll see, I'll see. Like, what's the point? What's the point of all that? He just wasted my time and your time. Was he, like, a good friend of yours that you had to answer the call or what? So he was another reason why I didn't really want to work with. So you know the, the mechanic that sort of spun me around with the G-Wagon? He is friends with that mechanic, and he uh, brings his car there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now I'm like, like you hang out with this guy that's like lightweight and a bit shady, and you bring your car to him like for the past few years, and you tell me some story about how because I offered him a sales position because he he does sales, and then and then he somehow loops it to yeah I was doing sales for this guy who was like helping dentists he wanted to buy dentists you know I brought him like you know, a bunch of leads, it would have add up to like 75,000 in three months, but you know, he pulled out, so that's $75,000 in the drain. And I was like, um, I don't know, man, it's sad to hear that. And then like, you know why it's like a shock to me? Cause I'm so far apart from like the average person. Like I feel like the average person is sort of like, they beat, a, they beat around the bush. They're not straight to the point. They're like, they around a lot of time wasters i'll get back to you or I, I don't know let me check my calendar and i'll let you know a few days before i can't lock it in now like i'm so far away from those type of people so when i do talk to someone like i'm like whoa are, are you like do you have like a mental problem or something <laughs> that's my first reaction but that's just like the normal person i'm so bad that's so rude i didn't mean that guys <laughs> oh, damn, but yeah i know what you mean but yeah, like it's, it's it's easy to forget that everyone, you know, not everyone can like, I'd say like plan ahead their life or whatever for like the next five months or whatever. It, it is what it is, you know, like, but that guy just, geez, bun him off. Absolute waste of time. Waste of time. How do you deal with time wasters? You just bun him off. Tell him no. Nah, you know what it is? Say no. Nah. Him and that guy that I met at the park, they make it so, they don't give you a freaking a gap to like end the conversation. Yeah. That's the hard, that's the annoying part, I yeah. think. And, and you keep wrapping it up and they keep bringing it further. That's that's the way to do it. Like, it's so awkward when you try to wrap it up and they keep going. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, take a hit and just stop. You know what I mean? Like, oh, God damn it. But look, we're, we're going to call it there before we keep going on in circles about this one guy because it just sounds annoying. But yeah, 45 minutes, I reckon it's... It's all the decent, episodes. Decent, decent episode, yeah. I like this today's episode. I'll let you wrap it up. Yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Let me know what your th thoughts. I try to steer in a different direction. We tried something different. In the last few weeks, we've been definitely talking about like mindset and not giving like a what people think and perceived value and self-esteem. So I try to like do an episode just about stories, about random stories and things that's happened to me in the last week. So hopefully this episode's more fun. I think probably a good balance is a mix of both. Um, that's sort of what I'll try working towards. But yeah, definitely give me your feedback. Let me know what your thoughts are. And yeah, Christian, you could close it out. 
episode 42. Thank you so much for listening, guys. Um, see you in the next episode. Peace.